Welcome to Makeup 101, The Basics. So this is the first video in a five day series that I'm gonna do for you all. And sorry that the lighting's so funky in here with the gray blue wall color, it makes everything kind of a funky tint of color. But anyway, um, every day I'm gonna talk about a different subject just to get you laid out with like a groundwork for doing a basic makeup look. Nothing too advanced or anything because if we keep it basic and classic, that's something that's never gonna go out of style despite whatever trends are going on right now because trends are just that. It's a fad, it's something that's gonna go out in two weeks and what use is that to you if in two weeks, big bold eyebrows aren't the big thing. So I'm just gonna teach you, lay out a foundation and a groundwork for you to go on your own and hopefully help you choose what's best for you. So this first video is gonna be kind of boring, but it's stuff that's going to really help you in the long run as far as choosing what is best for you. So I, if you see me glance to the side, I have my notes here so that I don't go off onto some sort of random tangent at all. Um, I already am, but anyway, okay, let's get to it. So today what I wanna tell you about um, or talk to you about is your skin type and your skin tone and a few basic tools that you should really have in your makeup kit. So first, your skin type. Is your skin oily? Is it dry? Is it normal? Um, is it a little on the sensitive side? All of these things matter because if your skin, for example, is very dry, you do not want to use just a plain powder foundation on top because if you do that, it's going to make your skin look even more dry. So basically, um, your skin type is going to determine what type of makeup is best for you. So if you have dry to normal skin, the best recommendation I have is use a BB cream. And that's actually one of the easiest products we have to work with. You can use it just like a moisturizer. It has a very sheer color to it. Um, it's not gonna cover lots of imperfections if you have a lot on your face that you wanna cover. It is not going to cover that. But if you use the BB cream, and this again is if you have dry to normal skin, if you put the BB cream on and then put a powder over that, you're getting the BB cream which will act as a moisturizer and um, it will help moisturize those dry patches on your skin. Then you can go ahead and put a powder over it for more coverage, if you have those imperfections you wanna cover, but it'll also stop your skin from, maybe if you have combination skin, looking oily in those common areas that people get grease, like on the chin or next to the nose and in the middle of the forehead. By adding the powder on top, you're getting the coverage and you're absorbing any extra oils your skin might develop throughout the day but by adding the BB cream, you're moisturizing. And moisture is the key to youthful, glowing, healthy looking skin. Okay, so next, if you have oily skin, if you have oily, this is where you wanna reach for that powder foundation because it's going to stay matte and look natural throughout the day. It's not going to just feel like I guess like you're sweating. I don't I don't know how to explain it the best way, but it's not going to get a greasy type finish to your face. You're not going to feel like a slime ball like you need a shower. So, if you have oily skin, go for a powder or a liquid to powder foundation. And for example, our Touch Mineral Liquid Foundation is a liquid to powder. So, it is excellent and it is best for oily to normal skin. All right, if you have combination skin, once again, go with that BB cream and powder. Sop up that oil, but it's also going to moisturize those areas in your face that tend to be on the dry side, which is usually more towards the hairline around the edges. 
Now that we've talked about a few of the skin types, next you need to know your undertone. And I feel like this is the most challenging part for most people. And here's why. People tend to look at their skin and look at nothing but the imperfections and say, oh, I'm very pink. Those are imperfections most of the time that have occurred over time from environment, um, like stress, sun, alcohol, dehydration, smoking, those bad choices we've made in our lives. They lead to those red, ruddy patches on our faces. That does not mean your undertone is pink, okay? So don't look at that. You need to look at, remember when you're a kid and you see those pictures and you go, oh my goodness, my skin was perfect? Think about your skin when it was like that because these patches that occur on our face are not our undertone. They're just that, an imperfection, okay? So there's generally three undertones, warm, cool, and neutral. Um, warm and cool, how to tell the difference. Generally, people who are more Western European, blondes, blue eyes, um, very fair, more often than not are cool complected. If you sunburn very easily, you have a cool, are more likely to have a cool complexion. If the veins in your wrist appear blue, you're likely to have a cool complexion which means a pink undertone. Pink means cool, so remember that. Um, if you're on the warm side of things, warm complexions tend to have a yellow undertone. So we're, when I say warm complexion, oftentimes it's Greek, Italian. Um, people that have more of an olivey skin tone or their veins appear green, tend to be warm complected um, and so their undertone is yellow. Now the reason knowing these is important. I'm just going to show you a picture of Unique's foundations. Okay, you think they're set up lightest to darkest? They are, but here's another thing about them. These three here, so ignore all these other ones, these three here are um, warm, cool, neutral. Neutral is you kind of fit in between the middle. For example, you might sunburn, but then it'll fade to a tan. Whereas if you're warm, more than likely you don't burn at all. You just straight go to a nice golden bronze tan that we all wish we could get. So um, basically we're set up here. Notice how pink this middle one is. That's for the cool complexion. Here's neutral. It's kind of pinky, but it's kind of yellowy at the same time. That's what we're looking for when we are picking colors. And then the next three are set up the same way. These are the medium colors. However, once again, they're set up warm, cool, neutral. All right, so this is why knowing your undertone is important because knowing this undertone and what complements you is what's going to also help you decide on colors for the rest of your face. Your blush, your bronzer, your lipstick, your eyeshadows. For example, if you have a really warm, yellow warm complexion and you put on a really, let's say, a bright pink lipstick and it has a total blue undertone to it, like so cool looking, it's going to look very harsh and out of place on your face. That's all I'm going to say about it. And same with your blush, it's going to look very unnatural if you use a very, very warm colored blush with like almost an orange base to it on a skin tone that's very cool and fair. So think your eye, Think your stereotypical redhead, um, blue-eyed, Irish, freckled girl. Put an orange blush on her. If you can imagine it, it probably seems pretty harsh, and it's going to look pretty darn harsh in person. So that's why it's so important to know what your skin tone is. 
So what I'm going to do is I am going to, in the comments section below, post a couple of graphics, um, some charts that'll help you help guide you in determining what your skin's undertone is. More than likely, you already know your skin type as far as dry, normal, oily. So what I want you to do is determine your undertone. The last thing I'm now going to go over today are basic tools in your makeup kit. Because tools, to me, the two things that are most um, personal choice in makeup are eyeliner and tools. Because if something doesn't feel good to you or feel comfortable, you're just going to go, I give up, doesn't work for me. You got to find what works for you and what feels comfortable. Some things are easier to do, some things are harder, but if you have a tool that's totally wrong for the job, it's going to make life that much more difficult. So here's the tools I really recommend you have. One, some sort of powder brush. Really fluffy, nice and big, help get powder all over your face. Um, spread it out, blend it out, you need one of these. I'm not saying you have to spend a ton of money, just get what feels good to you. It's very important. Next, a blush brush. I personally prefer an angled one. This is smaller than our powder brush. You can see, but it's still very fluffy for its size. I prefer an angle just because it makes it easier for me to sweep the color up where I want it with my blush. Some sort of flushy, flushy, fluffy shader brush. This is for eyeshadow. I like this, once again, is an angled one. They also have ones that are perfectly square. I like this for my shadow because I can get my base color and I can get the crease color in there just with one brush because of the angle. A concealer brush. I like this personally. A lot of people feel more comfortable with their fingers. I love using this because I can get right up underneath my eyelashes, down around my eyebrows if I have to, without disturbing the rest of the area. I can get in tight to those areas. And you'll understand why in a later video because concealer will be a different color than your foundation. Next, whatever you want to use to put your foundation on with. I like uh, the unique blending buds always use them while they're wet or damp I should say and you literally just bounce and roll and it'll give you a nice airbrushed finish Last tool that I cannot live without a brow and lash comb if you're doing your mascara and all of a sudden you get a little clump you literally comb your eyelashes and it'll pull that clump right out and it'll separate your lashes so they fan out all beautiful and flirty. You need one of these. This is one of those tools I think that a lot of times we get in one of those random kits and we tend to toss it to the side. Keep it. Um, I didn't really care for it till re more recently and now I cannot live without it. So thank you all for watching. Um, I know that was kind of long, but tomorrow we'll get on to a little more of the fun stuff of actually doing makeup. So I just wanted to lay these few things out for you today. Thank you for watching.